infrared saunas don't offer the same health benefits as traditional saunas because they don't get hot enough. Plus, all of the studies on the health benefits of sauna bathing have been done using traditional saunas, so infrared saunas are clearly not the same thing, right? I don't think so. And until recently, I didn't really have any data to back up my hypothesis that infrared saunas offer exactly the same health benefits as far as your cardiovascular response and heat stress is concerned. But over the last couple of weeks, I conducted a scientific experiment, at least as scientific as I could possibly do it. And I'm going to talk about the test setup. And I compared three different types of saunas and how they would induce stress, cardiovascular stress in particular. And I compared a full spectrum infrared sauna from Sunlight that would heat up to 160 degrees Fahrenheit, a traditional dry sauna from Redmond Outdoors that heat up, heats up to 230 degrees Fahrenheit, so significantly higher temperatures, and a traditional wet sauna from the same brand that would heat up the inside of the sauna to 220 degrees Fahrenheit. Again, significantly hotter than the infrared sauna. And without further ado, here are the test results. And if you look at the table, I'm not revealing yet which test maps to what sauna, but you can clearly tell the differences in terms of my heart rate, my heart rate variability, my respiratory rate, so how quickly I had to breathe to you know, sustain the heat, as well as my body's blood, blood sugar response. And there are clear differences, and I'm going to reveal them in a second. But before I do that, I want to explain how I conducted the test, so we are all on the same page. And then at the end, I'm going to have a surprise for you, because I conducted a fourth test that completely wiped me out. I had to get out of the sauna way before the end of the session. And by revealing that fourth test and how it dramatically impacted my cardiovascular system, I'm hoping that you change your perspective a little bit on how you approach sauna bathing and how you, you know, see the health benefits that you can receive. But before we talk about the reveal, as well as that surprise fourth test, let me tell you real quick how I conducted the experiment. So I used two different types of saunas, as I mentioned already, a three-person Sunlight and Impulse full-spectrum infrared sauna and a six-person Redwood Outdoors barrel sauna with a Harvia 9-kilowatt heater. It's a beast of a, he of a heater that cranks up the temperature really quick and really efficiently. And that Redwood Outdoors sauna I used in two different modes. One is I just, you know, let let the heater heat up without adding any water on the sauna stones, so a to mimic a dry sauna type of experience. And in the second test, I just kept pouring water every so often over the sauna stones, so to increase the humidity in the sauna, so to make it as uncomfortable as possible. I preheated both of those saunas in all three tests for at least 60 minutes to make sure they are really hot and as hot as they can possibly be. I sat as close to the heating source as possible without burning myself. I had the thermometer. I used the same one in two different saunas. It was a you know, one that I can move just above eye level, maybe on forehead level to keep it consistent because obviously heat rises and it's hotter up there than it is you know, lower. I also used my whip strap to confirm the heart rate readings that I would get from my chest strap. And I also recorded a, a whoop live so you can kind of see how my heart rate changes throughout the sauna session. I tested, of course, on different days. So I didn't you know, jump into all three saunas or did all three tests on the same day. I gave it a couple of days in between usually to you know have enough rest and don't skew the results. And the most important gadget that I had was a an advanced heart rate monitor from it's called Frontier X and it can record an ECG, an electrocardiogram. So I can see if I you know, I'm getting a heart attack while being in a sauna. It records obviously my heart rate, my heart rate variability. And the significance of HRV is that the lower the HRV as compared to my baseline, the more my body is in sympathetic overdrive, meaning that the more of a stress response I'm experiencing. So low HRV means high stress. High HRV means low stress. And so by looking at HRV and changes in HRV throughout the sauna session, I can tell how stressed my body was. I looked at the, or the Frontier X also recorded my respiratory rate, so how fast I had to breathe. Obviously, the more stress I'm under, you know, more uncomfortable it got, the faster I started breathing. And then also the heart strain. And in addition to that, as like a second set of biometrics, I also used a continuous glucose monitor, the Freestyle Libre, in combination with the NutriSense app 
to record my blood sugar response throughout the sauna session because I've noticed, especially when I'm, you know, just regular stress, chronic stress, but in particular high stress situations like a intense workout causes significant spike in blood sugar because again, as the body responds to the stressor and the sympathetic branch of the nervous system starts getting active, my body releases glucose or glycogen to make glucose available as a form of energy, you know, for when I need to fight or flight. You know, if I'm in fight or flight mode because of I know high stress situation, I need energy to deal with the situation. And you know, the same goes with heat stress. If I'm under extreme heat stress, I expected to see a an increase in blood sugar. And um, that's what happened, of course, and that's why I also wore the CGM. Now, what are some of the limitations of this study? Well, first of all, you know, I was the only one conducting it. So a one-person study, N equals one, is, you know, not as scientifically relevant as if you have a thousand people doing the same thing and then, you know, getting more statistically relevant data. But nevertheless, you know, I think it was it was absolutely relevant. And the metrics that I saw very much reflected how I felt in the individual saunas during the individual tests. But there are also other lifestyle factors that might have influenced, you know, my stress response. I noticed in particular with the, the wet sauna test, I was stre- pretty stressed on the day already because of my workload. And so that influenced the findings maybe a little bit. Um, obviously, there was the ambient air temperature and humidity that might have influenced the humidity inside the sauna, etc. So it's certainly not a perfect test, but overall, I think it was a it confirmed what I thought to be true. With that, let's reveal what is what. And if you look now at the table again that I'm going to show here on the screen, you can see that the dry sauna, which had the highest temperatures inside of the sauna cabin, 230 degrees Fahrenheit, caused actually the lowest cardiovascular response, meaning that my heart rate was the lowest, and those are max heart rates. I also have the averages, I can show them then, you know, uh, here as well, I have the all the averages and the max, but for the heart rate and respiratory rate and the glucose, I wanted to show the maximum response. And so in the dry sauna, 128 beats per minute, which is, which is a significant increase in heart rate because my resting heart rate is somewhere between 45 to maybe 55. And so going up to 128, it's a significant increase. That's a moderate workout, I want to say. My heart rate vari- variability, which usually hovers somewhere between 50 and 70, also dropped significantly. That's an indication that my body was under stress at 12 milliseconds on average. That's the average throughout the 30-minute sauna session. My respiratory rate maxed out at 31 breaths per minute. So I was breathing twice as fast, at least, as I normally would. Uh, my blood sugar spiked to about 119 milligrams per deciliter. That's, again, a significant increase. But it was still the lowest stress response overall. Number two, and that surprised me, with the lowest temperatures, only 160 degrees Fahrenheit, my heart rate actually maxed out at 132 beats per per minute. My HRV was even lower on average by 2 milliseconds. My respiratory rate was actually the highest among three, all three tests. And my blood sugar also significantly spiked to 131 milligrams per deciliter. So I clearly a much more intense stress response in the infrared sauna in comparison to the significantly hotter dry sauna. I mean, if you look at it, there is a difference of 70 degrees Fahrenheit, and yet the infrared sauna caused a higher stress response. So I think that by itself already busts the myth that infrared saunas don't work because they don't get hot enough. And as I've mentioned it in so many times before, it's not about the temperature on your skin, it's how much of that energy, how much of that heat gets transferred into your body. And air is a relatively poor way of making energy and heat move into your tissue. You need significantly higher temperatures to get a similar stress response, whereas infrared radiation can actually carry, because of its wavelength, carry that energy into your tissue and heat you up from the inside. And that's what's going on here. Now, however, the highest stress response, with one exception, I had was in the wet sauna, where I kept dumping water over the hot sauna stones. And I mean, the air inside was so humid, I could almost scoop out the water, you know, and and, and drink it or just open my mouth and get a, a glass of water by inhaling the air. It was it was humid in there. It wasn't quite as hot 
So the, the, the temperature maxed out at 220 degrees Fahrenheit, just 10 degrees lower than in a dry sauna, but my heart rate spiked at 135, my HRV was the lowest at 9 milliseconds, and my respiratory rate was higher in the dry sauna, but not as high as in the infrared sauna. However, my glucose also spiked just a little bit higher at 136 milligrams per deciliter. So I would argue that the relatively high heat compared or in combination with the incredibly high humidity caused the most stress response in me. It was, and, and also the way I felt this, and I actually, I got out that day at 23 minutes because I'm like, you know, I don't, I feel stressed and I'm, I think I want to be done now. It's not that I couldn't have stayed longer. Of course I could have, but it was just getting to a point where I'm like, you know, I don't want to stress my body too much just for this experiment. I'm already stressed enough. And I got out. But, you know, even so, I mean, everything else combined, the wet sauna was the most uncomfortable in comparison to the two others. It wasn't because of the temperature. It was because the combination of temperature and humidity. So now I did a fourth test. I mentioned this before. And that test I conducted by working out right before the sauna. I actually rode my Carol bike, which causes a dramatic sympathetic response, meaning it, it dramatically increases my body's stress levels in a very short amount of time. It's, it's designed to put you into fight or flight mode, to dump glycogen, to, you know, get you really uncomfortable really quickly. So I did this right before the sauna and I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm going to, you know, recover for 15, 20 minutes and I'm going to jump into the sauna. And it was the wet sauna again, meaning the barrel sauna you know, with the increased humidity. And I got into that sauna and my heart rate was already at about 105 or so. So it, I, I still hadn't recovered from the workout. I went into the sauna and here you can see the results. My heart rate spiked to 146 beats per minute. That's a significant strain. That's more than a moderate workout for me. My HRV dropped to six milliseconds on average. I mean, the lowest it was was one or two milliseconds. It bottomed out basically. My respiratory rate, 40 breaths per minute. I, was, I wasn't dying in there, but I felt like I'm donezy, you know? Funny enough, my glucose, however, only spiked to about 121 milligrams per deciliter. So that response was surprising to me and lower than I anticipated. But at the 20-minute mark, I was done. And I was not like, well, I could have stayed longer. No, I could not have. I had to get out because I was absolutely done. And what that tells me is that lifestyle factors, especially stressors, other stressors, you know, be it chronic stress from your job, you know, financial bills, parenting, exercise, you know, whatever you do, you know, leading up to the sauna can very much impact how you respond to the heat stress in the sauna. And it might also determine then how long you should be staying in there and how hot you might want to get. In the example of, you know, the fourth test, you know, I probably, I, I pushed it to my limits and that is not something that you want to do every single day because even though sauna bathing is good and a great stressor, a hormetic stressor, it's stress nonetheless. And if you're already, you know, redlining, doing, adding that on top of that is probably not a good idea. But the conclusion from all of those testing that I have is, higher ambient air temperatures doesn't necessarily mean more benefits. You know, I think that myth is busted. You know, higher temperatures don't mean anything. It's how much of the energy gets into your tissue and how your cardiovascular system responds in with, you know, vasodilation, with increased heart rate, with lower HRV, with, you know, blood sugar response, higher respiratory rate, all of those things. And you can measure that. And I've done that. And as you can see, Honestly, I mean, yes, there are minor differences, but overall, it doesn't really make a difference if you go into an infrared sauna or a dry sauna or a wet sauna. You know, you can vary it maybe, you know, the time a little bit. You can vary the temperature here and there a little bit, you know, depending on how stressed you are and other factors. But overall, you get pretty much the same benefits, I would argue, from either of those sauna types. So don't, you know, freak out about, oh, I only have an infrared or only have this or only have that. Sauna bathing, heat stress is a good thing, generally speaking. And you can make it work one way or the other. I think what's important is that, you know, when you, especially, especially when you talk about infrared saunas, high quality infrared sauna is important. And that means high emissivity heaters, you know, cheap infrared saunas very often have low emissivity heaters. So you get less of that energy transferred into your tissue and a lower stress response. So you might have to stay longer in that sauna or you might not get the same benefits at all compared to a high quality 
full spectrum infrared sauna such as the sun at an impulse that we have here you know consider your overall stress level again if you're already stressed out if you're already you know redlining you know jumping into the sauna and staying in there until you're you're dying or feel like you're dying maybe not such a good idea you know listen to your body and take stress levels into account one other thing that i should notice it in particular at in wet saunas or in dry saunas and but also the degree in infrared saunas it makes a difference where you sit right i mean there's a reason why sitting a hub high on a sauna you know if heat rises is more challenging than sitting all the way on the bottom i've noticed also sitting as close as possible to the heat source is significantly more uncomfortable than sitting on the other side of the bench or maybe you know like you know resting on your knees and having your head lower down where you know you're at lower temperatures overall all of that makes a difference so take that into account instead of just looking at the thermometer it might be mounted somewhere up there in the sauna depending on you know where you where you sauna bathe the absolute temperature doesn't make is not the only factor that plays a role here there are many others i hope you learned something in this video i hope you liked the video if you did give it a thumbs up subscribe if you didn't like it if you want to see more tests different tests let me know in the comments and i hope i'll see you in the next video